Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. As you recall, in our last episode, we actually created this tennis graphic that you see right here, and we went over in some detail how we constructed this in GT Title Designer. And I showed you each one of the different elements within this graphic, and I showed you how we made them using this ABC button you see right here, and this triangle button. And that's how we constructed the majority of this graphic. Okay, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you uh, each of these buttons and I'm going to show you what each one of these buttons uh, does and how this layout operates the different components uh, within that tennis graphic. So to get started we're going to go up to this top bar right here where it says tournament name and then next to it it says sponsor logo and let's go ahead and click on the cog button here and we'll find out that this particular button here for the tournament name is merely a text field widget and you can see where we mapped it to the tennis graphic and then the component of that graphic um, i just entitled it top text and that's what's going to be the name of the particular tournament or the particular event uh, that you'll be doing you'll see that whatever we type in right here is going to be reflected in this top text right there so let's just go ahead and call this one man's stream invitational and you can see whatever on top and a type in this text box right here it's reflected on our graphic right here uh, this next part here is the sponsor logo um let's see i do have a few choices here let's go ahead and click on this one it's a 3d logo that i had made doesn't really look right in this particular graphic so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click and go back to the original graphic and let's go ahead and click on the cog button and see what's behind the sponsor logo button. This is a list widget and we mapped it to the same tennis scoreboard graphic. And that's what all these different components are going to be mapped to the tennis scoreboard graphic. And on here, the particular title is called sponsor logo. So all I did is I came down here and I clicked on the plus button three times, one, two, three, and I put these three blank lines. So just for this demonstration right here, I'm going to click the plus button one time and it brings in a vacant line here at the bottom of my list. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my files button and let's just go to downloads. And... Uh, We'll just go to this one right here because it's one of the most recent ones I downloaded. So I'm not going to download it. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to go up here on copy path. Then I'll get rid of this and I'm going to come back over here where we created that open line. I'm going to right click and paste. And I'm going to have to go back in and take out these quotation marks at the beginning and the end of the graphic so that it will be displayed properly. I'm going to click OK. And now when we go back up here, we have this graphic that we just added right here. And I'll click on it and you can see where it brings it in right here. And just to refresh your memory, that was a list widget. So now we're going to go down to the player one scoring and we're going to go under player one name and we'll click on that. And it's no surprise. This is a text filled widget. It's mapped to the tennis scoreboard graphic. And the component of the title that it's matched to is player one name. If you click this drop down arrow right here, it's going to give you all the different components within this graphic. But we selected player one name, and there's actually more to this graphic than that. And what we selected was right here, and then we click OK. So same deal, anything I type in this right here is going to be reflected in the player one name. Okay, so just for... Uh, fairness sake we're going to type in Billie Jean King here and then you can see whatever we put in this text field box showed up on the graphic right here in the player one field and we have right here this little box set up if we click on it this is going to show service for player one and it does it shows player one is Jimmy Connors and it shows him with the service right now when it comes time for Arthur Ashe uh, to serve we'll click on player two serve and you can see where the tennis ball goes from where Jimmy Connors was to down here to where Arthur Ashe is. Well, how does that happen? Let's go up and click the cog. And you can see this is a button widget. 
And there's a couple pieces, a couple commands in here uh, that we run. So we had to click the script button here twice. And all we're doing is set visible on and setting visible off on a couple of the components of the tennis graphic. So let's go over here under set X visible on. This is going to be the service image for, for player one. So let's click on the title button here and see exactly what it says. So we're going to go under images, image two, image two, the images are down here, source and image. You remember we use those names synonymously. So two is going to be service player one. So it's going to show that little tennis ball next to player one. Now over here where it says set X visible off, that's set X visible off uh, for image one and image one is player two. So we have two things going on here. It's setting the tennis ball on next to player one and it's setting the tennis ball off next to player two. Now the converse is true for this one. Go down here, you can see where we have set X visible on and set X visible off again. We'll click on the title. Image one is service player two. So we're gonna turn it on for player two. X visible off. Index two, index two is service player one. So we're turning it off for player one and we're turning it on for player two. So I'll show you that one more time. We're gonna to toggle it back on for player one and turns it off next to player two, turns it on for player one. And then for player two service, we'll click it again. It's gonna turn it off for player one and turn it on for player two. Now points, is this portion of the graphic right here and points for player one are right here. So let's click the cog button and you can see that we have this set up as a list widget. And in here I have 0, 15, 30, 45, and deuce. And I have these set up as uh, list items. So all I did is I came in here and I clicked this button one, two, three, four, five times. And then I came back and I just typed in this spot here, zero. I typed in here 15, 30, 40, and then the abbreviation that I'm using for deuce. Now, you're gonna have player one points and you're gonna have player two points. And since this button is under player one, we wanna make sure we have the tennis scoreboard graphic and we wanna make sure we have it mapped to the title of player one points. That's what the P1 points stands for. So now all we have to do is use this drop down menu and as we click on it, you can see where the points are changing. 30, 40, and then we can go to deuce and we can use that if we need to. So we'll take it back to zero. Same thing for player two, except for player two, we have it linked to the title portion of the graphic P2 points. And again, it's a list widget and we have the same increments put in for this one as well. So let's go to the drop down menu, 15, 30, 40, and we'll just take it back to zero. So let's go back up here to set one. Set one is this area right here. All of these through here are list widgets as well. So I'll just show you the example on this one. These are all the same, they're list widgets. I had to go in here and click the plus button seven times. And then I typed in, or actually eight times. And then I typed in zero through uh, seven here. And this is a list widget. So it's gonna give us the drop down menu and it's gonna very, make it very easy to change the sets for us. On this particular one, set one, set two, set three, set four, this should actually be set called set five instead of set four copy. So I'll change that now. So this is set five. So we wanna make sure we have this set up for player one set five score, and that's what we have. So let's put this one back. We'll go to the next one. This is set four, and we have this set for player one set four score, and we have the same bits of information in here uh, that we had in the other list widget. And all these are gonna be the same. This is set three. So we have this map to player one set three score. 
This is set two. We have it mapped to player one set two score. And this first one, this first one is mapped to player one set one. So for demonstration purposes, right now we have it set at uh, one set a piece. Let's say Jimmy Connors wins the next set. It's gonna go to two one. You can see how that changes. Connors wins the fourth set as well. So now it's a decisive three one lead for Jimmy Connors right now. Right here I have another button. This is for when the game gets tied. So we'll go ahead and put both of these guys at 40. So the game's tied and now um, since Ash is serving, we'll say Ash wins the next point. We'll click on this and you'll see the advantage button comes out. That, uh, that is signifying that Arthur Ash now has the advantage and the next point, if he scores the next point, then he will win the game. So he does score the next point. So let's go ahead and and uh, clear the advantage and I'll show you how those buttons work in just a second. And then we'll go on back over here and we'll give Arthur uh, the fifth set. So we're gonna go down to this drop down menu. We're gonna click two. And now the score is three sets to two in the first set. And we'll take these guys back to zero. So these particular buttons here for the advantage, how did we do those? Well, these are just uh, portions of the graphic uh, that was a text field that I put in. And all we're doing is we're turning the AD off and on uh, next to those two particular areas. So set X visible on and set X visible off. If you remember for the, when we were doing the service, we had an image. So these types here were image. Since we're uh, turning text off and on here, the type here is going to be text. So let's click on this. We have text one and text zero. So we're turning on text one, and that's advantage player one, and we're turning off text zero, off zero, and that's advantage player two. So we're going to turn the AD on for player one and turn the AD off for player two. So let's see what happens. And it does. It turns the advantage off. And if the advantage would have been on for player two, it would have turned it off. So now let's go to player two. So again, we have set X visible on and set X visible off on the type for both of these is text. So let's go back to the uh, titles. Set X visible on for index zero is advantage player two. So we're gonna turn it on for player two and we're gonna turn it off for index one and index one is player one. So we're turning it on, on for zero, which is player two and off for one, which is player one. And since we're looking at text and not sources, we're looking at this zero and one here and not this zero and one here, because this zero and one here, as you can see, is related to a source image. So let's go ahead and click on this advantage button. And you can see the AD comes on next to player two and it goes off next to player one. Now I have this button right here, which clears that. Well, how does that work? Well, all this is, is using set visible off for both of those particular text fields. So let's click the title button. You can see this says set X visible off. This one also says set X visible off. And when we came here, this would have been, there would have been nothing here. And all we do is click this button right here twice. And that's what adds the script. So let's, let's look at the titles. So let's go back up here to text. We're setting X, we're setting X visible off on index zero, which is the advantage text for player two and we're setting it off for index one, which is the advantage text for player one. So we're just turning both of them off at the same time. We're having both of these set to set X visible off. Now let's click the button and you can see where it goes away. And this button right here turns the score bug off and on. So how do we do that? Well, let's click the cog and take a look. What we're using here is we're using the command overlay input X. And in a lot of our previous videos, we were doing a lot with overlay input X. 
And when you use this particular function, and it doesn't say off or on at the end, it allows us to use it as a toggle. So we have it set to the tennis scoreboard, and we're operating this on the third overlay channel. So when we click the button, it will turn it off and on. So let's click it once, turns it off, click it again, and it comes on. And that is because we're using this command, overlay input X. Okay, just a few more things to show. Over here, um, on the, we have two different clocks. We have one, which is the time of day, and that is this one right here. And this clock, I just, uh, this clock right here that has time of day, I actually set this in the uh, vMix Title Designer, and I'll show you how I did that. I go up here and I right click and I click on Title Editor. I came down to right here where it says Clock Time. And there's a lot of different formats you can choose. If you click this button here, it'll give you all the different formats that you can choose. But this is the one that I chose here because it's going to show hours and it's going to show minutes, minutes. And the reason that I chose this format right here as 0 colon H colon MM is this H stands for hours. And if I would have chosen the one from the drop down menu that says HH, uh, that would have showed two digits for the hour. And when it's like it is right now at 255, it would have showed 0255. And I just think the 255 looks cleaner. So I just chose uh, that format right. Now this one over here that says match time, that was a little bit different. And let's go back to this look right here. And this is, this is what I'm talking about right here where it says time of day. And let's go ahead and click on the uh, cog button. And we can see that we have this mapped to the tennis scoreboard and then we have it set to the match time clock the format that we're using is hours minutes minutes and seconds seconds we have this set to count up and not count down if we wanted it to count down from a set amount of time uh, we would click reverse and then it would it would start at whatever that time is and count down a second at a time but we want it to count up so what I did is for the default time here, because you have to put some type of a time in there, I put in six hours because most, most matches aren't gonna last that long. So if we click start, you can see where it starts counting up from zero, and this is gonna be the cumulative match time or the duration of the match. You can pause it by clicking the pause right here, and then you can start it back. Now, I also made just a little automation here because sometimes these little uh, figures for play, pause, and stop are a little hard to uh, operate. So up here, you can see where I checked this box here next to start, and then I typed a link in here that says start match. So let's pause it, or let's go ahead, yeah, go ahead and pause it. And let's look under this one right here that I have that I used for start match. Now, all I'm doing is I'm using one command, so I had to click the script button one time. I'm, execute, I'm using the execute link command, and the command is the same command uh, that we put in to the time of day, which was start match. So when I click on this, so now when we start the match, it's going to start at zero, and it's going to count its way up. Okay, folks, that will conclude our tutorial today which was part two of our tennis scoreboard graphic. In part one, that had a detailed description of how we created the graphic in GT Title Designer. In part two here was just an explanation of how we operate it using vMix UTC and how we came about this particular vMix UTC setup. If you like what we're doing here, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. And as always, thank you so much.